System 2 is a bridge to the future of quantum computing. IBM Quantum Engineers took a holistic approach and will be capable of housing the upcoming 400 and 1,000 qubit processors. And even processors we haven't begun to develop yet. System 2 takes a hexagonal form. The scalable modular structure will allow us to bring fridges close together. It will give flexibility to design even larger quantum systems by linking processors together. System 2 represents a glimpse into what the future of quantum computing looks like, a true quantum data center. By following this roadmap, we think that by 2030, Companies and users will be running a trillion quantum circuits a day. And we hope that quantum computers will be providing real-world benefits, solving some of the world's most important problems. Human beings face big problems. In fact, our biggest problems are so big, we often don't even recognize them as problems. We see them as impossible obstacles that we learn to avoid, not tackle. We need to feed increasing numbers of people, change the way we use natural resources, better manage volatile global economies, and counter emergent viruses. Before quantum computers can start to solve these grand challenges, we need to solve some grand challenges of our own. In September, we showed our hardware roadmap and a clear vision of how we get to the inflection point of 1,000 qubits over the next three years. But our ultimate objective is not just to create 1,000 qubits in hardware. Our ultimate objective is to make this hardware useful, not just for the relatively small number of quantum experts, but for the vast majority of the 12 million regular professional developers on the planet today. To do this, we need to make the adoption of this radical technology as frictionless as possible. In other words, developers don't have to learn new tools or languages and can even use their existing code. All they need is a few lines of code to call a quantum API service on the cloud. We also have to understand that as part of the most active quantum development community in the world and proudly open source, there are many different kinds of developers working at different levels. Our aim is to help orchestrate this ecosystem so multiple developers can contribute to each layer, each feeding the layer above, providing abstraction without trivialization. So we like to say that frictionless development starts from the bottom up. So going back to our roadmap, here's where we want to be. Simple cloud-based services created by model developers that any developer can use. Now bear in mind it took classical computers 60 years to go from programming with individual logic gates to sophisticated cloud services that developers use today. With quantum computing, we need to go through the same process in the next three years. So this is our plan for how we make this happen. Before we can even think about cloud services, we need to radically improve the performance of quantum hardware. And we do this with a layer of software that interacts with our classical control systems. Currently, our circuit API, which goes back to 2016, allows users to create an object that defines the quantum instructions sent to the quantum computer. This is fine for simple circuits, but to reach our objective, we need to run many more circuits much faster. So our first announcement is we're launching our quantum runtime in 2021. This will support iterative, efficient running of different circuits and updating the future circuits based on measurements of the previous one. We'll be demoing this later in the year where we we're aiming to show a significant performance increase. With today's implementation, all these loops run on the user's computer, backwards and forwards across the cloud. With the QuizKit runtime, we execute these loops physically close to the quantum computer. This will speed up applications like this example by factors as large as 100 times making something impractical today possible. 
Another thing we need to do in order to reach our ultimate destination are what we call dynamic circuits. These are circuits that are smart and can offer branching within the circuit based on measurements within the circuit. We call them dynamic because they can change their future state based on measurements that happen in the middle, and this is why we need a classical hardware to do it. This is a real hurdle. It is very hard to create these, but the good news is we've already made significant strides. We're also announcing we've already made mid-circuit measurements and mid-circuit reset up and running and available for use today. In this figure, we see that by running the reset multiple times, the fidelity at preparing the zero state can get much better. Plus, we've also demonstrated some simple feed forward showing advantages of using iterative phase estimation. Iterative phase estimation is a core sub-algorithm for quantum applications and it amounts to solving the following. Imagine the problem of phase estimation of some unitary and here we want to do it with the minimum number of resources. In one case, we could do it all with a dynamic circuit or by post-processing many circuits. Here we see that for the dynamic circuit case, we can win for limited resources. So this is a major first step to dynamic circuits. As we evolve, we predict certain circuits will get used more and more frequently. So we want to offer a library of optimized pre-built ones, optimized for the quantum hardware and applications in mind. Once we're dealing with thousands of qubits, we'll need more and more efficient tools to manage these large circuits. We'll need tools to study error correction and the execution of millions of circuits a developer want to run. To do this, we need advanced control electronics built from the ground up to integrate seamlessly with classical HPC. Having HPC tightly bound to quantum resources will allow us to level up our ability to solve for much more complex computation. The next layer of software we envision being developed by algorithm developers. In 2020, we saw our first module being developed out in the open for optimization and natural sciences using the tools that the kernel developers have built. By 2023, it will make sense to create pre-built quantum runtimes in order to run more efficiently, followed by pre-built runtimes for classical and quantum resources. These will be deeply tuned to the specific problem set that users and developers want to explore. Then finally, to scale these open source modules, we need to integrate them into the cloud. Running on top of these runtimes, this gets us to our ultimate objective. So to recap, here's what it looks like by year. Up until 2019, quantum circuits were run on the IBM cloud. In 2020, we focused on demonstrating and prototyping quantum applications. And in 2021, we'll run quantum applications 100 times faster on the IBM cloud. And in 2022, we'll increase the possibility and algorithms that can be explored with dynamic circuits. In 2023, we'll get to our goal of frictionless development with quantum workflows being built into the cloud. In 2024, with our 1,000 qubit systems, we'll build quantum services from the cloud and investigate things such as error correction. And in 2025, we'll enhance quantum workflows through HPC and quantum resources. As I said at the start of this talk, human beings face seemingly impossible problems. Quantum computers allow us to see with fresh eyes. Repositioning the seemingly impossible as grand challenges we can actually tackle and even turn into opportunities. We're on a journey to make this happen, and we look forward to doing this with our IBM Quantum users, partners, and developers. And if developers can eventually do all this with a few simple lines of code using their existing tools, we've succeeded. Thank you. The challenges we face as a planet can be summed up simply. We need to provide reliable and affordable energy to our growing population while also addressing the risk of climate change. Natural gas provides energy to the world. When compared to coal, it emits up to 60% fewer greenhouse gases and produces fewer air pollutants for power generation. The issue isn't just one of production, but also one of transportation. Shipping liquefied natural gas, or LNG, isn't like shipping sneakers. Efficient shipping is absolutely critical. LNG needs to arrive on time, or people could run out of power. The global LNG industry today involves thousands of voyages a year across the globe. 
To handle the scheduling in a global supply chain over a year, you must account for the positions of each ship on each day of the year while satisfying requirements for hundreds of deliveries across the world. This problem can involve millions of discrete decisions, which means the number of routing combinations we would need to consider could be larger than the number of atoms that exist in the universe. The problem becomes even more challenging if you go to a much larger fleet or introduce uncertainty like disruptions due to weather or fluctuations in demand. Then you're talking about billions or even trillions of discrete decisions. There currently isn't a computer on the planet powerful enough to do this without greatly simplifying the problem. At least not yet. Quantum computers allow us to view incredibly difficult problems with a fresh set of eyes. We've been conditioned in many cases to simply not consider problems with an incredibly large number of variables or potential solutions. Quantum computers completely change the model by which we can perform information processing. Instead of with classical bits with zeros and ones, we have quantum bits, or qubits, that follow the natural laws of quantum mechanics. The point is we're not dealing with just flipping zeros and ones anymore. And instead, we have a rich set of rules that governs our computations, allowing for the exploration of an exponentially larger computational space. Working in partnership with IBM Quantum, ExxonMobil Corporate Strategic Research has been exploring how to model maritime inventory routing on quantum devices. We've looked at the strengths of different mathematical approaches in quantum solvers, including how well they account for complex real-world constraints like limits on ship sizes and timing of when ships need to arrive and depart. These mathematical models could also be relevant to other vehicle routing problems, including goods delivery, ride-sharing services, and urban waste management. Today, IBM already has over 20 quantum computers across the world, running over 1 billion executions a day on the IBM cloud. We've opened up this technology so that everyone can sign up and experiment with it. And so far, that means 300,000 users. By partnering with IBM Quantum, our aim is to ultimately level up our ability to tackle more complex optimizations and make bigger differences. We believe these will provide different ways of thinking about the dual challenge we face now and the ones we will tackle in the foreseeable future.
Quantum computers are meant to address problems that cannot be addressed by classical computers. Things like finding the right materials to enable carbon capture, to really bring the fight to climate change, to address more efficient fertilizers that can not harm the earth, but also continue the food supply chain that we need to feed the world. Also, there's some fundamental questions of how our universe is stitched together and how matter behaves at the atomic and subatomic levels that we need to know. It's the next frontier. Let's take one area of research already underway, the search for new batteries. Batteries have transformed our lives by allowing us to carry computers and smartphones, but there's more to be done. Batteries are crucial to our clean energy future. Whether it's powering electric cars or really pushing renewable energy, we need a fundamentally different chemistry to create the batteries for tomorrow. Quantum computing would allow us to effectively look inside the battery during its very complex reactions to enable us to think about new materials and the structure of the batteries that are going to be needed to power the next generation of devices. How do we get there? By building the world's most advanced quantum devices and a developmental platform and making it available to the world. Only by working together now will we be able to solve the problems that we'll be facing together in the future. Today's AI systems provide us useful recommendations and predictions, but their accuracy depends on lots of annotated data to train neural networks for every new task. To address this, IBM Research is championing a new approach called Neurosymbolic AI. It combines the statistical, data-driven learning capabilities of neural networks with symbolic reasoning techniques. For example, a neurosymbolic system could use a neural network's pattern recognition capabilities to identify objects in videos or images, then rely on symbolic AI programs that apply logic and semantic reasoning to identify relationships among these objects. The MIT IBM Neurosymbolic Concept Learner learns by simply looking at images and reading paired questions and answers. The goal is to create explainable AI systems that can tackle more complex tasks while increasing accuracy, learning from fewer examples, and using less data. As a researcher, you're always looking for new innovation. We're building new tools to accelerate how scientists can discover new materials. Everything we are doing is to make the discovery process more efficient, faster. We need new technologies for carbon capture. Food for the entire population. We need rising global demand for clean energy. Better and more sustainable devices. New drugs for an emerging pandemic. In five years. Five years. Five years. At IBM Research, we're using AI and machine learning technologies to help us accelerate the way that we discover and learn about new materials and try and reduce the amount of CO2 that we're actually releasing into the atmosphere. There's a huge opportunity to capture the amount of carbon dioxide that's coming out of power plant flue stacks. We're looking at sorbent materials, which are usually liquids where you have the flue gases actually bubbling through it and it's absorbing the CO2. And then we're also looking at membranes, which actually can filter it out. Carbon dioxide, once it's been captured, has a couple different destinations. We can use it to create plastics or other polymers that have a lot of value. One of the goals for the future of humanity is producing food for the entire population. Fertilizers played a very important role uh, in the agricultural cycle. This production of fertilizer is consuming approximately 2 to 3 percent of the total energy on the planet. It's not sustainable. We got inspired by the same processes that bacteria are using with the use of novel materials. We are going to be environmentally less impactful producing fertilizers. What we are doing here is eliminating heavy metals from our battery chemistry and make battery more sustainable. The current Tumayan batteries, they use cobalt and nickel, causing some resourcing concern with the energy-intensive mining. 
we chose a more sustainable and safer material set. And those materials gave a pretty promising performance, fast charging capability, and higher energy density, and less flammability as well. Better batteries really meet rising global demand for clean energy and electric transportation. Everything is a computing platform these days. Not just our phones, but our watches, our cars. As computer chips become ubiquitous, we really need to make sure all the materials that are used are as sustainable as possible. We are trying to use advanced simulation, including quantum computing, AI, deep search, and advanced automation to help us develop better and more sustainable materials that are used in the production of computer chips. quite expensive to bring a new drug to market. And the timeline is 10 years or more. If we first look at drugs that are already approved, it's a more effective way to use our research dollars. So how would we find new drugs for an emerging pandemic like the COVID-19 crisis? The AI looks for patients who have uh, pairs of diseases where the, a drug that they're taking for one disease actually turns out to be beneficial for the second disease. We think that technology will let us find drugs that can potentially address disease really quickly. We designed an approach to accelerate the entire material discovery process. It reduces the amount of time, it reduces the amount of resources. But we are changing the way we'll do discovery. And then revolutionizing the world around us.